it was well and the other thing that i think we don't realize is happening during the first year post-op is it's a lot of instant gratification that's happening yeah. actually yeah so you might think that you're healing mm -hmm. and getting through things just fine and learning new ways to live and new ways to cope and all these things but in reality you might not be doing as much of that work as you need to be doing because and but you think everything is okay you think everything is fine because you're so distracted by the excitement of the yeah. weight loss you're so distracted by the again instant gratification of like seeing those results all the time and so in your mind you're like well it's working like i don't have to work on anything else i don't have yep. to worry about anything else and then just like you said like you hit maintenance though mm -hmm. that instant gratification goes away yep. you're no longer seeing those results all the time you're not you're no longer you know once you hit maintenance and especially the longer you're in maintenance it's not all these exciting NSV moments. You might still have them once in a while, but it's not the same. We just got our blood work done. Yeah, we did. And our doctors asked us, what are we doing to have such great blood work? Yeah, and you know what we told them? Procare! Pro oh my goodness. Yeah, we told them like, yeah, we take Procare every day because they have a multivitamin that you can just take one a day. Yes, exactly. They have a capsule and a chewable form. And not only do they have vitamins, but they also have calcium, calcium chews. chews. Oh my God, they're so good. They're so delicious. It's like our own little sweet treat for the end of the night. It really is because they have the dark chocolate and they have the cinnamon roll. Yes, and I love the salted caramel and the dinner mint. All righty, we'll go to ProCareNow.com and use code OSLP at checkout to save some money. Okay, trying to figure out portion sizes after weight loss surgery is fucking hard. So hard. So freaking hard. So we found this company and they take the guesswork out of it. Yeah, my goodness, guys. Look, it's portion perfection. They have bowls and plates and they have all sorts of organizing things on their website. I can't wait to get more. But it literally tells you one cup, one and a half cup, a fourth of a cup. Like the guesswork is completely gone. Yes. And the plate, even better. Protein, salad, veggies, whatever. And then this little section, carbs. So yeah. Because you can have carbs. You so, can have carbs. We are so excited and we cannot wait to see what you guys think of this. We This is definitely OSLP approved. 100%. So the link is down below. So click that link, get your discount and start getting your portions correctly now. We have found something very, very extraordinary and it's different. It is one of a kind. Mm -hmm. It is New Try Health. Yes. And they are giving you the next level information on your weight loss surgery journey. They really are because they fill you with all this information about exercise and food. You watch a little, little clip minute and a half at the most, and then you do a little fact checks and then you do an article and then you do a quiz one yes. time, one time. And so you get to track your progress. And not mm -hmm. only do they have these quizzes, but they have a place that you can log your food, your exercise and your weight. Yeah. And they're not tracking calories, guys. They're tracking your mood. Like, mm -hmm. how did you feel yesterday about your food? Did you exercise? So it's a way for you to journal without journaling. Yes. So go to NewTryHealth.com. Choose our Sleeve Life podcast as your provider and sign up to maximize your weight loss surgery journey. Yeah. <gasps> welcome, welcome back. back OSLP WWE! Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. I said that very quickly. Yeah. And loud. I was like, how do I keep <laughs> up with her? I love it. Oh my God. <laughs> you are listening to our sleep life podcast and this is Kelly. This is Ma. Um, and we have an award show. Yeah, we do. It's coming up. You busters Way get over fast. to our website. <laughs> yes. Yes. Go over to the website, our sleep life podcast.com. Um, and then either if you're on your phone, it is called the hamburger icon. It is. That's is what I call it. Little. No, that's legit. What oh, it's so called. I was right. Yeah. yeah the hamburger it's button. legit what it's called. The yep. hamburger, but hamburger button. Yep. In the right hand corner. Yes. And click the award show page and all of the info that you need is right there. It is. You got says, voting. You got freaking hotels. You got the tickets, tickets. Cause you have to get your ticket. You do. It is general seating. So you can sit anywhere you want with mm -hmm. anybody you want. Um, it's just one price for everybody. That's right. Um, we are so stoked. We are There's so excited. So many fun things that we have planned for this night. Mm -hmm. And it is a one night only event. Yeah. In Portland, Oregon. 
at the historical Aladdin Theater. Hell yeah. It is so I'm cool. So excited. It's so cool. And you get to walk the pink carpet, which we have rolled up in Melanie's living room right now. Mm-hmm. Or dining room. Dining room. Kitchen. Something. Area. Area. Um, <laughs> but it is real. It is pink. It is pink, pink. Like, I kept saying that when I unrolled it. I was like, oh, this is pink. This is like, legit. Like, exactly what we wanted. And you get to get your photos taken. Mm-hmm. And super excited because Lainey Bliss is the one taking the photos. Yes. She actually took all the photos for both retreats. Mm-hmm. So we know she can fucking we know she knows do this shit. Doing. Yeah. So we are getting videos taken. We are having photos taken. Mm-hmm. Everybody will have access to them very quickly after the event so you can share and talk about it. That's also what's cool about coming to the event or purchasing a ticket is that you're going to get all the photos. Yes. So So you get to like hang out with all of your berry besties. Mm -hmm. You get to hang out with a bunch of cool people. Right. And you don't have to learn anything. No. You (laughs) just (laughs) come and be entertained and see people win some trophies, which the trophies themselves are really cool. They are. You get to see some honorable mention videos Mm -hmm. of all the people that were actually nominated. Yeah, because the whole point is everyone's involved yes so literally if you're nominated at all you're gonna be part of it yes so and it's we are super contacting cool. all those people so yeah we've been slowly doing it because there's like over 500 nominations yeah 500 people were nominated yeah this for is this crazy award show so we are contacting every single one of you we're getting your side by sides mm-hmm. we are going to co- incorporate them into a video for each segment each that's right category your, your girl's making it right here yep it's gonna be fun yeah it was kind of funny because we were actually nominated and we were like, uh, um, we can't be a part Yeah, of like this. our individual <laughs> accounts. I was like, hey, Cal, you're nominated for this. Yeah. <laughs> so it was pretty, it's it's in, very cool to be nominated. But yeah, we are not a part of this. No. We are just the hosts. Not just, but you know what I mean. Um, And so this is all made possible by our wonderful sponsors. Yeah, we have a lot of them. And yes. we are so excited because like literally everybody that's sponsoring is really what you need for you to have a successful journey. Yes. So like our top sponsor is ProCare. ProCare because you, you got to have your vitamins. Yeah, you have to have your vitamins. Yeah. They are one of the best companies that we have ever dealt with. That we ever worked with. They have put their trust oh in us God. from the very beginning. Yes. They, they see something in us and we have ran with it. We have, we're like, wait, you you see something in us? This okay. is exciting. Let's okay, let's go. Let's do yeah. this. So, of course, they have to be the top sponsor. Yeah. And then the next really cool sponsor, which we actually might be talking to right today now oh, yeah if you're on youtube you would know you would know is <laughs> michaela miller losing to blooming yes she is a incredible life coach yes she is um and we have gained so much knowledge from her almost every episode we do with her we've taken little tidbits and used it in our yes. own lives so yes. that's why like she's so valuable she's very valuable so check her out our next one is miss jamie miss jamie she is the sleeve dietitian and the tribe membership that's right um, which this program is really cool because she has so many people professionals mm-hmm. that run support groups that are bariatric patients. How cool is that? Yeah. Yeah. They're all experts in their field and they've all had bariatric surgery. Yes. So they literally know. They know where you're know at. how you feel. And they can help. Yeah. And I have been in the support groups. I love the support mm-hmm. groups. I wish I had more time to be in the support groups. Right. Because she has one every, almost every day. Almost every day. And yeah. that's what's really cool. She knows that like, hey, this journey's hard and like you might need to pop on to a support group today because yep. yep. life is messy. Life is very <laughs> messy. Yeah. And then our next sponsor is the Surgical Associates of Bayonet Point. Yeah. We love them. We have had mm-hmm. numerous conversations with them and I'm just excited that they're an office that is bringing in new stuff. Right. Yeah, because they have that body composition machine. Yes. And they focus on exercise yes. post-op. Like, and pre- they help like, with they it. They talk about it pre-op and post-op, yeah. which I think is it's such a big component that I think a lot of offices don't mm-hmm. incorporate. Yeah. So yeah, that's why we love them. Really love them. Yeah. And they're in Florida. So yeah, it's, Tampa. Yeah. Tampa. And the next one I'm so excited for because it's my surgeon. Yes. Yeah. It's um Dr. Patterson. And she runs the Oregon Weight Loss Center in Portland, Oregon. Yep. And I mean, she's done an incredible job. Like she knows the people that created the sleeve. Yeah. Like she's so she's a cool been woman. part of this thing for like 20 plus years. Yes. Um, and I I mean I trust her with my life. I trust her with my my not my husband because he doesn't need it, but my brother. 
<laughs> my brother I has like, wow, done. Eric's thinking about weight loss surgery. I mean, <laughs> I trust her to do it if he needed it. it but so. he, he does not. But he, he does, does not. But yeah, like my brother has gone to her. So like their facility is super like welcoming. Mm-hmm. And I've been there I mean, a few times. she is just a ball of knowledge. So I'm just so excited a that she's a ball she, of knowledge. Yeah. That's ball. what you're going with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. A ball. A ball of a knowledge. Ball. Okay. Damn it. And then the next one is Dr. Joe Cribbins. Yes. Marty the Corgi. Mm-hmm. Um, he is he we have met him a few times him and heather yes and and of course marty i take selfies with marty every time i see him (laughs) um and they're an incredible family that is really here for the community legit yes and they are busy all the time he is constantly working and it's yeah we were there just visiting he did six surgeries that morning yeah like holy shit with us yeah i was like wow this dude's like doing six surgeries and making sure he can come to dinner with us yes like Holy shit. Yes. Like he really cares. He he really does care about. Yeah. And they're all about aftercare, too. They are like they are like abdomen about it. So, abdomen. Adam. Adamant. 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 You're just correcting me all day. You stop said it. Abdomen. Who cares? They know <laughs> I can't fucking talk very well. Shut your face, ma'am. You're not going to have a whole episode of you just they correcting are adamant. me. <laughs> they are adamant, people. Jesus. Okay. But they are adamant about aftercare. They want to yeah. make sure like you have it because they see all the problems when you don't. Exactly. Yeah. Um, our next one is the own bariatrics is Nulani. Nulani. She she just makes me happy. Well, she's a transformation coach mm-hmm. and she's been through this journey and she knows what it takes. Yes. And it takes a lot. It takes a lot. Yes. A whole lot. The next one is Miss Tabitha, mm-hmm. the, the real, real berry boss. boss. <laughs> she is a bariatric therapist mm-hmm. and we connected with her like Back when we first couple of years started. Ago. Yep. And we just immediately clicked. We have developed a very close friendship with her. Yeah, we have. And she is just an incredible woman yeah. to have in your corner. Seriously. Mm-hmm. And the next one's Dr. Eric Smith. Yes. From the TLC show, the Thousand, Thousand Pound Sisters. Sisters. And yeah. it's Georgetown. Yep. Um, they're gonna be sponsoring and he's gonna be presenting. He is. So. Almost all of our sponsors are actually presenters i know and it's it's really really freaking cool to have them there and presenting an award to a very deserving person within this community well yeah and they all want to be there to give they want to meet the patients yeah that's what's really cool Uh is like all these people are part of the community and they love patients yeah even when we were in texas at uh and we did the sleeve dietitians oh tribe the tribe meetup yeah he was there he showed up yeah he showed up and he sat with a bunch of patients and Mm -hmm. he sat there and talked and it was just incredible to watch somebody actually interact with our community. yeah they're not just like hey I, I did the surgery and peace out yeah like exactly. they're all in exactly so. so all right I think that was all of our sponsors I think that is so now while you are on our sleeve life podcast.com you're on you're on your computer your phone in your web page thing <laughs> Because if you're on Apple, it's Safari. If you're on Google, it's or on. I have Apple, but I will not fuck with Safari. That's fine. Or Siri. They're ridiculous. I'm Google all the way. Whatever. Um, <laughs> you need to go over to patreon.com forward slash OSLP and sign up because we have all different tiers. Yes. But our tier that we absolutely adore is the $7 tier. $7 because or higher, man. we have a support group on Facebook. It is not one of those toxic ones. No, nope. we do not allow that in. We have almost 200 members yeah. in this support group. And we group. have several men in there too now. We do. We just got another one. I know. It's and so cool. And it is really fun because they all interact with each other and they ask questions and we're all supportive. Mm-hmm. And even when somebody's not having a great day, we're there to kind of lift them up and be mm-hmm. knowledgeable about like this journey yeah like how like they're always helping whether it's like tips and tricks or Mm -hmm. is it a recipe Mm -hmm. because i know like you run out of recipes man and you do you really do and the other thing that i saw um actually this morning is somebody was having a really hard time with getting a certain medication Mm. for themselves Mm -hmm. and there was so much support of like oh try this try this go here like call this person to try to help just this one person that you've never even met in person right it's kind of crazy it's like the own little family so go over there sign up for the seven dollar tier become Mm -hmm. a benchy uh we call it the winner's bench because we hate the loser's bench term we do we hate it with a passion yeah so we changed (laughs) it it's now the winner's bench because we're all winners and what's good too is like when you're on the website it's just literally a button above to like 
to route you over there. Yes. And then when you're doing like if you're ten dollars or higher, you're automatically in the benchies and then you get that's what she said corner. Yeah. So they get their own exclusive videos that no one else sees. No one else yeah, hears. It's, it's just them. for the patrons. Um, and one actually released today. So like I'm really stoked for our benchies to hear. It's not it. that one, right? Not the one I really want. No, not, not yet. yet. Okay. Not yet. Right. Not I'm yet. excited for that one. And there's um, a really good one. That's and a- then you want to go over to YouTube. Yes. And you want to click subscribe. And you want to hit the little bell. Mm-hmm. So you get notified of future videos. Because we have a, we already told you. Yeah, we, we have, have Michaela on with yeah. us again. And we love having her on. So mm-hmm. welcome to the show again. Yeah. Hello, hello. Yes, I love being with you guys. Hello. I'm so glad to be back. Thank you again. Yes. Um, so excited to just talk about whatever we want to talk about today. I yes. guess I know might be talking about some struggles, but yep. yeah, you know, I I just your podcast has meant a lot to me. It's meant a lot to a lot of my clients that I work oh, with. Okay. And so being partnered with you guys is just, um, I love it. I well, love, we love it too, partner. man. We absolutely adore you. And so like, and we can't wait. We get to see you for the show. Mm-hmm. It's so exciting. I know. I'm yeah. so excited. And it'll be almost one full year since we saw each other saw again. Each other. Yeah. So yeah. It's going to be really cool. And I mean, you being on the podcast is probably like we hear all the time. There's there's certain people that just connect with our audience. And you are definitely one of them. Oh, yeah. We hear it like we need Michaela back. We're yep. like, oh, we already got in the works. You yep. don't have to worry about yep. it. We're bringing her back. <laughs> it's it's funny because I think back to our original episode that we first did with you. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that was so long ago. And we just we had to make this a continual thing. Seriously. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. So tell us after the last podcast that we did, where we talked a lot about like uh, healing a relationship with food Mm -hmm. and diet culture and things like that. I got so many messages after that podcast. Like, and so I was like, okay, we got to do another one. Like, let's, let's get this set up. Like, yes. Yeah. There's something about the dynamic and Mm -hmm. I just, I love it. It's just, uh, place to come and chat about all the things openly and, Mm -hmm. you know, provide whatever knowledge, education tips that I can while we're, while we're on here together for this hour. And also just like being honest about my own journey, my own struggles. Mm -hmm. And if that helps people on their journey, then that's amazing. Like that's what I'm here to do. Yay. Yeah. Cause I, I think, love it. I think today we're talking about how it's, it's okay to not be okay. Yes. And all the things that come along with that. Yes. Cause all three of us are going through different struggles. Yeah. All three of us are trying to figure out that routine that you, mm-hmm. I, cause I feel like it's so easy to fall into a routine in the beginning of your journey because it's very regimented. Yeah. You, you drink this water that here, you drink this protein here. Okay. You got, when you're further on, you've got your water and you've got your, each of your meals and you can't like it, you can fuck it up, but it's easier in the beginning, I think, because you're like, okay, I I'm on this journey. I've got this. I'm doing these things. When everybody's watching the beginning, like yeah. you're watching, your family's watching, your doctor's watching, you yep. get those checkups all the time. Yep. So you're like in it. Yeah. And then later on, that's when all the other stuff starts to come in. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we've got transfer addiction that can happen. We've got traumas with your family. You've got traumas with, you know, unfortunately there's a high rate of divorce within the bariatric community because people change. Yep. You, you can't lose a, a, a huge amount of weight and expect not to change because it, it changes your entire life. Yep. So it's kind of, you know, those other struggles start, start to creep in and then your your routine kind of starts to break apart. It does. I feel like in mine and probably yours too, Michaela, like it the that comes in and then the first thing you do is like kind of protect yourself and by letting go of that routine, you're protecting yourself but not really. Yeah, like typically yeah. that's what I would say that's key is that when you notice the routine's kind of going away, that's how you know you're in trouble. Something's yeah. going on. Yeah. 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 I think you're very Right. Like in the beginning, it is much more structured. It's much more regimented. We're giving like given our like list of things we can and can't do. And we stick to that pretty well. But then, yeah, life starts to happen. We don't go through this process in a bubble. And 
even if maybe your first year out is relatively smooth and you don't have a lot of family issues, work issues, things like that, that pop up life issues, Mm -hmm. those are going to come up eventually. So learning how to navigate that, like that Mm -hmm. is, I consider myself kind of like a maintenance expert at this point. I Mm -hmm. am for those that might be newer, don't know my background. I'm six years post-op, um, had my VSG in, uh, May of 2016. I lost 150 pounds. I've maintained the 150 pound weight loss, but that doesn't mean that I haven't struggled. It also doesn't mean that my weight hasn't fluctuated up and down throughout that. You know, I think the key to lasting success, the key to maintenance Mm -hmm. is learning how to ride those waves, Mm -hmm. learning how to, you know, you're going to go through moments of life, moments of struggle, moments of stress where you, you're not going to be able to check off all the boxes Mm -hmm. all the time. So learning how to adjust that, how to adjust your priorities according to what life is throwing at you at the moment. It doesn't have to be this all or nothing. We really, really, that is like the main thing we have to get away from on this journey is this idea of perfection, this idea of all or nothing, um, because that will be the ultimate detriment is that mindset. Learning to ride these waves. And, you know, one of the things we might talk about today is like, um, I call them my grounding routines. So Mm -hmm. when I'm in these moments of struggle, when I'm in these lower moments where life seems really heavy and I'm kind of at capacity, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe I'm not getting in an hour long workout every day, but I could still get in like a 30 minute walk. If like, Mm -hmm. that's all that I can you know, kind of maintain at the moment yeah. that's still having, like keeping me grounded, keeping me in control on my journey. Um, you know, maybe I'm not getting all my to-do list things done. Maybe I'm not, um, you know, getting a full morning routine done. Like I usually like to do. Um, but I'm still getting up and I'm starting my day with water and yeah. I'm still, you know, getting my vitamins in every day, like learning that it doesn't have to be. And that's really hard, especially because throughout the weight loss phase, throughout that first year, like I said, you're going from kind of like more regimented, more structured, but also this like mindset and this idea that in in order to lose the weight, in order to be successful, like I got to work out every day. And if I miss a day of working out, then oh my gosh, like, am I going back to old ways or am I going to gain all my weight back? And so really like for me, it's been this whole long, again, I'm six years out. Okay. So this isn't something that you just learn the first year or the second year. I honestly think a lot of growth happens once you get into maintenance. Like that's when you really start to learn like what it's going to take to make this a lifelong journey, Mm -hmm. not like these short-term habits and goals, but like how to shift this to and balance it to what you are willing to maintain long-term to what your life needs. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think that like, that is something I really had to learn over time is, you know, how, how to balance that for myself, how to ride these waves, how to rest when I need rest, Mm -hmm. trusting, like showing myself and teaching myself that, Hey, if I take a step back from working out every single day, Mm -hmm. the weight doesn't instantly come back. The I'm not going back to old ways. That's not what it means. Like Mm -hmm. you can rest. You can have moments where you struggle And it is okay. It doesn't have to mean you're failing. It doesn't have to mean you're going backwards. Um, But that takes time. It takes time to build that trust. But you also, in order to build that trust, you have to practice it, right? Mm -hmm. It's have to be willing. So like you said, being okay with not being okay, right? Mm -hmm. What does that mean though? Like, and what does that look like? Because we say it all the time. It's okay to not be okay. Mm -hmm. 
But then do we actually practice that? Do we actually believe it? See, I think it really, yeah, it really depends on what you're going through and what, and what stage you're at, like mm-hmm. you're saying, because yeah, I'm seven years post up. So I, and what's funny is actually I'm May of 2015. So we're literally just one year apart. That's yeah, crazy. That. Yeah. That's crazy. But it's because like when you hit three and four where Kel's at right now, yeah, you have to learn what does maintenance look like for you mm-hmm. and yes. what are you willing to tolerate in your life versus not mm-hmm. tolerate in your life. And you're, and you're exactly right. You have to learn to trust yourself. So you have to do the things to see, okay, am I okay about being around food? Am I okay about being around alcohol? Like, am I, can I walk into a store and not try to buy everything around me? Like you have to start going through and talking to yourself. Mm -hmm. I would say that's really what it means to not, like it's okay to not be okay is learn to talk to yourself, figure out what you actually want because what you want and what you do a lot of the times are two different things. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have to really analyze your life because now you're in the mode of like, I, how do I keep this fucking shit off and not get mad at myself? Yeah. Because what we're at right now is actually what we were like before surgery. Like we have to like learn the new habits and, and actually use them. I think that's the biggest deal is that we yeah. don't, sometimes we just don't use them and we just stop. And that's where the routine mm-hmm. breaks. Cause we realized, Oh, I haven't had like the protein levels I was supposed to have for like months now, mm-hmm. or I'm not getting my vitamins every night now. I'm not sleeping the, the way that I used to sleep. Mm-hmm. I'm not to like for me at nighttime, uh, which I realized it from you on our last one was if I'm not taking off my makeup at night and washing my face and putting my stuff on and something's going on because I'm like, why mm-hmm. am I to stop doing that? Like that's, that's weird. Right. Mm-hmm. And I noticed with the trauma that I went through with Eric, like, yeah, everything was broken. All rules were out of the fucking window. Mm -hmm. Like I lived part time in a hospital for six fucking weeks. Mm -hmm. Like that is very tough. Like you don't know what you're doing. I just knew every morning I needed egg bites and I didn't know how to get them. Like (laughs) I was like, I was like, how do I get my fucking egg bites? I know I need protein. I know I have to talk to doctors every morning. I have to be on point of that at least. Mm -hmm. So that was like the one thing I got in every day was like protein in the morning. That was at least all I could do. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, well, and sometimes you have to do just that one thing, thing. that one thing that makes you feel semi normal. Yeah. Because I know uh, we were kind of chatting before about there's some days where you, if you do one, that one thing, you're like, okay, then I'm good. I did my one task. Yep. And I remember having this conversation with Mel when you were actually newly home. Yeah. We had just gotten back and Eric was home and you were trying to navigate. She was saying how she was having anxiety about certain rooms in the house yeah. and like a certain like big task. I couldn't open my computer. Yeah. It was super weird. I've yeah. never felt like before. I couldn't go into two rooms in my house. Yeah. And I couldn't open my laptop. And I told him like, I'm really sorry, but I can't open it. And I was like, here's <sighs> the thing. You have this this fear, this anxiety of it, but you need to like set a one task up in your brain mm-hmm. of say today I'm going to hit my water Yep. or today I'm going to unload the dishwasher. And if that's all you do, then you're, then that's good Yeah. because you're going through a lot. Yeah. I know going through the divorce process and like living in a house where I was reminded of all of the things that had happened, all the during, memories, all of the memories. It was, yeah. it was very weird. And that's what, how I got through it is I was like, today, I'm just going to make sure I hit my water Yep. or today I'm going to make my bed. And there were some days that I did it. And then there was other days that was like, nope, I'm not getting out of this bed. Yeah. And yeah. that's just, it was kind of like rolling with the punches because I never knew what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And it was completely out of my control. And I mean, most of the time I dealt with that with food. That yeah. was how I dealt through that process is yep. I ate. Because nobody was there to see me and I could do it. Yep. Whenever you wanted. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. And it was numbing those feelings. Mm -hmm. It was numbing and it was comforting because it was there. And I didn't have to think about the fact that my whole life was going to change. Correct. And I, the hard thing was, is I had just hit maintenance mode. Yeah. Yeah. When this happened, like legit hit it. And then my husband left me. Yeah. And so I was like, like, how do you learn that? So Yeah. So I was going through trauma and trying to navigate like maintenance mode all in the same thing. And that's really, really hard. So I think that's why I gained as much as I 
have. Have, yeah. Because I never truly dealt with anything. I just used food to cover it up. Um, And that's kind of, I think, the hardest part of this journey is when you realize, oh, there's, the outside world is still happening, whether I do what I'm supposed to be doing And you or not. have a real problem. You like have that's, a real problem. And yeah. when you're like me and you don't want to address any of those feelings. Yes. And you just are like, nope, I'm not thinking about you today. Nope, <laughs> we're not going there. That's a problem for future Kelly. That is a problem for future <laughs> Kelly. Right now, Kelly is going to eat that popcorn. <gasps> yeah. That popcorn right there, that cake. Yep. Uh, so it's really, I think it's really good to find what comforts you. What, because I never found that routine. And I think that would have yeah. helped yeah. A lot through that process. If I had had a routine of like, no, I get up every morning and I wash my face and I do the things that I need to be doing. Yep. I did not do that. I'm finding more of a routine now that I'm living in one place again. Like, oh, yeah. That's so much easier. Because that was another thing is I was like half living at Zach's house, half living at my new house. That I didn't even really want to be at, but I was I had to find somewhere to live. And so I was like half here, half here. And I never knew what the day was going to bring. Yeah. You never were all in on your on that routine because no. you're broken. I was, it was two. a broken up routine. Yeah. So, yeah, it was. Well, and the other thing that I think we don't realize is happening during the first year post-op is it's a lot of instant gratification that's happening, yeah. actually. Yeah. So you might think that you're healing mm-hmm. and getting through things just fine and learning new ways to live and new ways to cope and all these things. But in reality, you might not be doing as much of that work as you need to be doing because, and but you think everything is okay. You think everything is fine because you're so distracted by the excitement of the yeah. weight loss. You're so distracted by the, again, instant gratification of like seeing those results all the time. And so in your mind, you're like, well, it's working. Like I don't have to work on anything else. I don't have yep. to worry about anything else. And then just like you said, like you hit maintenance though, mm-hmm. that instant gratification goes away. Yep. You're no longer seeing those results all the time. You're not, you're no longer, you know, once you hit maintenance and especially the longer you're in maintenance, it's not all these exciting NSV moments. You mm-hmm. might still have them once in a while, but mm-hmm. it's not the same as what you yep. experienced in that first year. So all of that exciting distraction is now taken away. And now, like you said, now you have to navigate how to successfully uh, go into maintenance, mm-hmm. but also how how do I now develop new coping mechanisms? Mm-hmm. Like how do I... How do I, uh, you know, the habits and routines I've set up throughout this whole first year, Mm -hmm. maybe those aren't actually maintainable. Like what is actually maintainable for me? What am I willing to keep up? Like what, what does my life actually allow as far as that is concerned? And yeah, I hit maintenance and then life hits some Michaela frozen yeah, yeah. okay there you are go are we back yeah yeah I okay. think so sorry no you're fine you're fine it's been well, it's been weird down here. So we thought it was us for a while. A while and so we were hard line into internet. So now yeah. we're like, nope, that one's not us. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes in my office, it can be a little funky too. So okay, gotcha. um, hopefully it's, hopefully it's going, but, um, but yeah, so then it's about figuring out how to, like I said, ride those waves of life, how mm-hmm. to when life hits, it doesn't mean that we have to stop everything. It doesn't mean that we have to throw it all out the window. How can we still balance? And maybe that means the balance has to shift, right? So again, maybe when, when life is going easier, it's, it's, you have more capacity, you have more time, you have more energy to check off all these boxes. But when life is hitting you with something, maybe it's loss, maybe it's illness, maybe it's, you know, something with your job, like 
whatever that is, learning how to adjust those priorities. It doesn't mean that we have to lose all of them, Mm -hmm. but it is having more grace and compassion for yourself. Um, learning how to shift priorities, how, and I think a lot of it, I just had a conversation. I just did a live with Denise. She's the crunchy sleever. I don't know. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. I just did a live with her actually this weekend and we talked about maintenance and we talked about some of these things. Um, But I also think a lot of maintenance is learning who you truly are and how to truly honor yourself. So like something I'm learning about myself is, and oh my gosh, we can go into so many other like <laughs> levels here of like having to reparent yourself, having to like mm-hmm. unlearn old, you know, limiting beliefs and narratives that you've been told about yourself your whole life. Mm-hmm. Like, um, you know, my upbringing, I wasn't really allowed to be, I'm a very sensitive person and I wasn't really allowed to be very sensitive. I, I was, I'm the oldest child. It was on me to make the family proud, like be productive, go, go, go get straight A's. Like your only value and worth is if you are performing, you know, at a high level. Succeeding. Yeah. Yeah rest is really hard for me. Rest is super hard. Um, but like right now with everything that's going on in the world, I'm having, I myself personally, and I know all my clients too, where a lot of us are having a hard time navigating just world shit right now, the world heaviness right now. Um, other things that I have going on in my personal life and things like that, like it's a lot and I'm feeling it and I am sensitive and learning. One of the things I've had to learn for myself is that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay to allow myself to be sensitive. It's okay. So to me, that's what being okay with not being okay means actually giving myself permission Mm -hmm. to rest. If I need rest, Yes. Mm -hmm. give myself permission to again, like adjust my priorities. If I need to adjust those priorities, Mm -hmm. just like you said, if all I can get done that day is I hit my protein goal or I go for a walk, Mm -hmm. that's still progress. That's still something. One of my favorite mottos that I heard in this last year is half-assing is better than no-assing. And I love that motto so much because I have such Uh, And I think so many of us in this community, I think it's partly why we struggle with weight. We struggle with our wellness um, because we are so hardwired for perfection. We are so hardwired for all or nothing. We have been like raised or ingrained that you don't half-ass anything. You only whole-ass something, right? No. Yeah. If you're going to do it, do it right. That's what I've always been told. Yeah. 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 Well, that just that builds us up for failure. That builds us up for not making any progress because sometimes with life, we don't have the energy or the capacity to fully give our attention and, you know, to this thing, whatever it is right now, it's wellness that we're talking about. So maybe you can't give the hundred percent, but at least giving 50% is better than 0%. And so finding those little things. Like I said, for me, I have certain like routines and habits that I consider them grounding. They keep me grounded. Even when life is tossing me around, when life is a lot and I'm feeling a lot and I'm overly emotional and I'm at capacity, like leaning on these little routines and these habits that I built up and You know, like you said, Mel, one of those things is my skincare routine in the evening. Like, you know, that is something that keeps me grounded in my self-care. Like that's a little five minute routine that I do for myself, no matter what life is throwing at me, that keeps me feeling like I'm in control and I'm taking care of myself. And then for me personally, some of those other routines are like, a daily walk. If, even if I can't motivate myself or if I don't have the capacity to get to the gym, Mm -hmm. 
if all I can do is get outside for 15 minutes to walk, like that's progress for me. That's, that's keeping me rooted in one of my core values of wellness, which is movement. Like movement is one of the main, to me, it's the main pillar that keeps me going. Yeah. Um, and then prioritizing protein. Like even if I don't have the capacity to fully meal prep every week, even if I don't have the capacity, even if I'm eating out more, Mm -hmm. I can still, even if I'm leaning more on like convenience foods and things like that, I can still prioritize protein within those meals. And so, you know, when I'm at my best and when life is going easy, I have the capacity to meal plan, meal prep, I make a lot of homemade meals. I'm at the gym six days a week. I'm also walking on top of going to the gym. I'm, you know, hitting all of these awesome wellness goals. I have a great morning routine that I do. But when life hits and I make capacity, I shift my priorities. I have a lot of grace for myself because that I think that is um, critical. It is critical that within that you aren't feeling guilt or shame that you're working through that. Why, why am I feeling this guilt or shame? Where is this coming from Mm -hmm. trying to practice more forgiveness again, Mm -hmm. working on building that trust, showing yourself over time. Okay. Even though I had to downshift my priorities a little bit, I had to scale things back because of what's going on with work or family or life or whatever, I'm still maintaining or I'm mm. still making progress. Maybe it's slower progress than I was making before, but I'm still making progress. Like yeah. showing yourself that it's okay, mm. that you can trust this, that mm. it doesn't have to be all or nothing. Um, and I do have a question so, for you. So for uh, our listeners, can you explain to them one, what is a grounding routine and why is it important? So again, to me, a grounding routine is a routine that I have something that I can lean on that keeps me grounded in my wellness journey that makes me feel like I still have control when life feels out of control. So when life is feeling out of control, it will also send us feeling into this, this feeling that we don't have control. And then it can be easy to let our routines and habits completely slip away, Mm -hmm. um, which again, then can send us spiraling even further. So bringing back a little bit of that control, even if it's just one or two habits, one or two routines that you grasp onto, um, you know, again, maybe, maybe it's just water, maybe like your focus for a while is just hitting a water goal for like, a couple weeks, Mm -hmm. showing yourself that you can still keep that promise to yourself, showing yourself that you can still keep this commitment to yourself, that, that you are still a priority. Um, so yeah, that's what a grounding routine is, um, building those grounding routines. So for me, like, you know, again, it's taken me a long time to figure out like for me, what these priorities are. So what I would say is, figure out what your main priorities are for your wellness. For me, one of my main, main priorities is movement. I think that's so important. Why not? It's not just about weight and weight loss and things like that. It's also about mental health, yep. spiritual health. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we need to move. And when we are in dark moments, typically in those times, something is going on that's triggering us or can be putting us in kind of like a frozen state. Yeah. Um, and when we're in that frozen state, it's not just physical stuckedness. It's also mental and emotional mm-hmm. frozen that's going on to get that moving. You actually need to move your body. You need to get up and move and maybe get some sunshine, get, you know, some fresh air. And so I think movement is <clears throat> where it all kind of starts. So if I'm in that place where, okay, shoot for like a week or two, I've been really stuck. I'm starting to sink even lower. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, what can I do to start inching my way back? And that's the other thing when we're, 
in these moments of struggle, so let's look at it as like a zero to 10 scale. Okay. We're like, zero is like a major depressive episode. Yeah. That is like, you yeah. know. That, that's us not getting um, out of bed, not wanting to talk to anybody. Yes. Not yeah. of the barrel. Yeah. Been there. Yeah. 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 So that's zero. 10 is where we're like at our best, you know, like everything's going great. Mm-hmm. Love and life, like awesome. So maybe you're like at a five. It's not about, okay, what can I do to get back to a 10 again? What do I need to do to get back here? It's what can I do to get to a 5.5 right now? Mm -hmm. And then once you're at a 5.5, what can I do to get to a six? Like it's about inching your way back out. Yeah, just a little bit more every day. Yeah. Yeah. That makes more sense because when you said uh, not trusting yourself, I realized that I don't trust myself at all. No, you do not. I don't trust myself to make the good decisions. I don't trust myself to follow a routine. I don't trust myself at all when it comes to this. And I think it's because I'm in this. So if you look at the like zero to 10 scale, I'm probably at like a three. Like I'm not, I'm not in the good range. I'm not in the bad. Like I'm right in that, like in betweener. And I think I, that's where my brain goes. What can I do to get back to a 10? (laughs) <laughs> what can I do? I'm just like, I re- I want to just get back up to full, fill my tank the way it's supposed to be filled. And I just, what do I need to do? So I'm taking it all as like, okay, I need to get my water. I need to get my protein. Okay. I need to do my vitamins. Okay. And I, I got to figure out how I can cut out what doesn't need to be eaten. I need to do therapy. Like I'm literally mapping it out in my head of like, okay, I'm going to get back to that 10, but I'm not going to get back to a 10 by taking it all on. Yeah. That's overwhelming. It's very overwhelming. Cause if you try to do that too soon, then you can go from your three to all of a sudden a seven to a zero. Yeah. Yeah. Because you went too fast. Yeah. And you're basically setting yourself up for failure, which yeah. is like you said, then will bring you even lower mm-hmm. because it's a shame and guilt cycle when we yeah. do that. Cause it's like, well, what's wrong with me? Like why I'm trying all these things. I'm doing all these things. Like, why can't I get there? Mm-hmm. And then you feel even worse than when you started. So it's about those baby steps and something about trust, building trust within yourself. Mm-hmm. A lot of that is because you're not maintaining the promises and commitments that you are making to yourself. So what I would say, I know I brought this book up before, but I, I have all my clients read this book. I practice and preach a lot of these things, I'm, but I'm literally on Amazon. What is it, girl? <laughs> I know I've told you before Yeah. how to do the work, how to do the work, do the work. Dr. Nicole Lapira. Yes. I yes. have this book. I literally okay. have the book. I think you literally oh, shit, bought it. Last time. Last. <laughs> yeah, I think you did too. So, so maybe open that. <laughs> yeah. So it's just, it's an awesome, awesome book. I think everyone on this journey needs to read this book because we all have traumas, whether it's big T, whether it's little T, we all have traumas that we need to actually deal with. We all have things that we need to unlearn. We need to repair ourselves. We need to learn new coping mechanisms. Like, and that's what this book is all about. But yes. one of the big things that she talks about in the very beginning is that a lot of times the reason we self-sabotage, the reason we can't really make progress is because, again, we try to take on way too much all at once. Mm-hmm. And we can't do that. So we keep failing ourselves over and over, which is why we don't trust ourselves. This is why... We, and, and we lose confidence. We lose. So Mm -hmm. by doing something just as small as like, she talks about one of the clients that she works with in her book, who she had her client just start with a glass of water in the morning, show yourself that you can drink one glass of water in the morning, every morning for like 30 days. Okay. You keep that promise to yourself. And when, when you're building habits, when you're building routines, this is something that's also really important. If this is a new habit, if it's a new routine, which this also goes back to the, um, half assing is better than no assing. Okay. Okay. It's really important to try to keep that routine every single day. Like, but 
maybe like if we're doing the drinking water or maybe it's like your, your goal is to uh, go to the gym every day yeah, or get into a gym routine. So maybe even if it's not a whole glass of water, every single morning that you're having, you're drinking at least half a glass of water, mm-hmm. but you're showing yourself that you can still do this. You're showing yourself, this is a new pattern. This is a new habit that I'm building. Well, and I could even tack on just the fact of you going to the sink to fill up the cup is almost more important than you drinking it because yes. you built that habit of this is what I do right when I get up. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That is so true. And just like with the gym, if you're someone who you're like, I really, really want to get into a gym routine, or I really like, that's the next step that I want to work on. I keep saying that I'm going to do that because this is where the mistrust comes in. This mm-hmm. is where the lack of confidence is coming in. You keep saying that you're going to do it, but then you don't do it or you only do it for like a week and then mm-hmm. you miss a day or something and you completely fall off. So just even if you don't have the capacity or the time or the motivation to do a full hour long workout, mm-hmm. one of those days still show up, even just go to the gym, yep. drive to the parking lot to create this new pattern, this new habit to keep that routine going. It doesn't have to be again, all or, or nothing. nothing. It doesn't yeah. have to be perfect every day, mm-hmm. but showing yourself that you can do this, showing yourself that you can keep this promise, that you can build this habit and you're creating and building new pathways in your mind, new patterns. Um, you know, that is, that's what I would say to you, Kelly, is pick one thing, not two things, three things, five things. Maybe it is just water to start out with. Mm -hmm. Pick water, and say, you know, this is going to be my focus. I'm going to keep this promise to myself that I'm going to, you know, maybe it's just starting your day with water, or maybe it's that you're going to try to hit a certain ounce range. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the other thing that we do a lot is we set like this hard. Yeah. Hard line. Yeah. This Mm -hmm. hard line, like my clients do it a lot with calories, right? Like they'll just have like this hard calorie goal. And it's like, no, like let's set it as a range. So, because what happens is if you don't hit that hard Mm -hmm. target, then typically we go into that bucket mode that, well, I blew it. Like with calories, if my client goes over on calories, a lot of times they'll go into bucket mode and they're like, well, may as well just have the, the other thing, you know, like may as well just keep eating or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I already went over. Well, why, what's, what's wrong with going over by 50 or hundred calories, you know, like, mm-hmm. and instead of doing that, now you've just gone over by like 500 mm-hmm. calories because you saw the 100 is like ruining it or a bad thing. Mm-hmm. So start giving yourself wiggle room, start giving yourself like more of a range, um, instead of like this hard, target yeah. line. Cause I know like, I feel better if I'm like, Oh, I at least got in the range today. Mm -hmm. Like it's so much easier mentally to cope with than that hard line that you're saying. And that's actually why, like, I don't even give myself like a water goal. Like, yes, my hydrate does my stuff and it Mm -hmm. has that goal in there. But that's why I was even saying like, just go and get up and drink and get the water because I did that. Like that was one of my things is like, I make sure I drink one full of these before I move to tea. That was something that I promised myself was like, this is 24 ounces. I need water before I do anything else. And that's what I started with Mm -hmm. because of you last time, there's a few things I incorporated was the water thing. And then the make, like making sure I take off my makeup Mm -hmm. and doing the thing. And then I noticed even like a few days ago, I didn't do it one night and I'm like, that's what am I doing? Nope. Get back. Stop, stop, stop. Because we crave as humans control. Mm -hmm. We want to fucking control everything if we could. Mm -hmm. Um, And so if we can just control little tiny, any bits things throughout the day, that would, it's going to make you just feel better. Like I know, like for me, the knot in my stomach would just slowly go away. And it feels nice to wake up and not have that fucking knot. But for like three months straight, it was there and it was very frustrating. I was just like, make it go away. (laughs) Who can help me make this go away? And it's really, I have to help myself because um, even when I want to touch on a little bit, like even in the beginning, how you're saying the instant gratification is there, like people need to understand with instant gratification, that dopamine firing is happening so fucking much. Yeah. So when you hit your three and four and five and beyond, your dopamine's not doing it anymore. So you have to figure out what will. 
Yeah. yeah. Is is it the fact yeah. that I'm excited that I drank all my water today? It might be. And who cares? Like I get to make that decision. No one else gets to, mm-hmm. to make that decision whether I get to be happy or not that I hit my water this morning. Mm-hmm. You get to make those. And that, that actually was more gratifying for myself was realizing, oh, I make the rules. I get to say what I'm happy about. And I don't give a fuck if my husband's like, that's really dumb. Fuck you. I got to drink all my water today. And you didn't actually because you weren't even yeah. like it wasn't even on your radar, mm-hmm. you know, but it's like we get to be happy about little shit that we do mm-hmm. because my therapist, because going through my trauma, like everyone's like, Mel, you really need to get a therapist. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you're not wrong <laughs> like at all. I need to go. And that was her thing was like I uh, she considers two things of grounding routines is one like finding something that you like to do in the mornings. Like and, and it really needs to be in the morning mm-hmm. guys. Like that's a huge deal. Kind of start your day off. Yep. And pu- puts a pace in. And she even said, when you say like, I've been waking up really good around eight to nine without an alarm. I can do that now. But before it was like, I'd sleep all day. Mm-hmm. And she said, it doesn't matter actually when you wake up, you just still need to do the routine. Yeah. She's like, so if you wake up at noon, I don't care if you miss some things. You got to do your routine. Yeah. Once your routine's done, your brain and your body feels like it's together and then you can take on the day. So I don't care if you wake up at one o'clock, get your water and start doing your normal routine. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, she is so not wrong. Well, yeah, I mean, I <laughs> get works. up every morning and go straight to the coffee. I make my coffee. I was getting into a routine of like. While my coffee was brewing, I was eating and Mm. it wasn't the greatest things that I was Uh, going towards. Yeah. So I've now like tried to like, okay, I start my coffee, then I go to the bathroom and then I come back out and then I do my coffee routine because I have a, I put my obvi in there and then I mix it with the little hand mixer thingy and pour my milk in. And now that I'm like pulling away from that unhealthy habit. It's getting easier and easier and easier. Yep. It's like the night eating. Yep. I literally j- work on it every single night of like once I'm in the bedroom and I'm in the bed, I don't go back out to the kitchen. That is my own routine for myself. Yes. Just like the first thing I get up and I go do my coffee. Those are my two routines mm-hmm. that I've now built in. Now it's the middle of the day that I need to figure out. But I, I'm getting to a point where it's like I've got what I do when I first wake up and I've got, I yeah. got a routine of when I was going to bed. It's very important so, guys. It's, it's have incredibly important balances. And I'm, I like cheer my own, my own self on. I'm like, woohoo, you didn't night eat for five nights. Yeah. yeah. So, and it doesn't matter if anybody else is cheering you on exactly. because it's, it's your own victory Yeah, to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's so important to celebrate every little victory you have, mm-hmm. every little success you get your water goal one day, celebrate that. Pat yourself on the back. Give yourself a high five. Like mm-hmm. we have to start celebrating the things that we are actually achieving, the mm-hmm. things that we are actually accomplishing. Cause it's a lot more than we actually realize. We get so down on ourselves at the end of the day for all the things we didn't get done. Yeah. Especially when we're in these moments of struggle, especially you can get really down on yourself which again, I think that's why it's important to shift your priorities mm-hmm. to in those times intentionally be okay with releasing some of the mm-hmm. other stuff that you're not going to be able to maintain mm-hmm. right now. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. Like shift those priorities, focusing on just the one or two things that you can maintain that again, keep you grounded in mm-hmm. your journey. And every day you hit those, celebrate that, show yeah. yourself like, oh my gosh, I did it. Mm-hmm. I accomplished this. I, you know, And over time, what that does, because our mind is so hardwired to be focused on the negative Mm -hmm. over time, the more you celebrate what you have accomplished or like practice gratitude, things like that, especially in the hard times, Mm -hmm. um, it gets easier and easier to see the positives. It gets easier, easier over time. You're training your mind, you're training your brain to more easily recognize the the good things that are happening or the things that you're doing for yourself that are good. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, before you would only focus on all the things that you didn't get done now. And I can speak from experience. I think now I am a lot more, it's easier for Mm -hmm. me to be more gentle with myself, for me to, um, 
practice more compassion and um, patience with myself Mm -hmm. because now I do have a much easier time of like recognizing the things that um, I'm I'm doing good for myself Mm -hmm. compared to all the other things that, you know, maybe I'm not getting those done right now, but that's okay. And that's another thing that I think is so important is I, I met with my therapist today. And one of the things we talked about is, you know, in my own life, I'm navigating a lot of really hard things this year, Mm -hmm. things that I've never had to navigate before. um, Stressful things like, and I'm still maintaining, I'm Mm -hmm. still like, have I had to shift a little bit? Yes. Like, um, some goals that I, I had the past couple of years, I had to let go of those focus on some other things this year and that's okay. But like looking back to how I would have handled these situations six years ago, I mean, these would have sent me mm-hmm. spiraling. Yeah. They would have sent me, you know, um, I would not be where I am right now if I hadn't. So it's just like not just celebrating your little successes every day, but also constantly reminding yourself of how far you've come Mm. and constantly like looking back and recognizing because a lot of the progress we make on this journey, it's not necessarily physical progress. It's not tangible. It's not something that you're measuring with a scale or a measuring tape or something like that. Mm-hmm. A lot of it is mental. Yep. It's mindset. Mm-hmm. It's uh, how you are, um, yeah, like processing things differently and coping with things differently. And so recognizing that and celebrating that because those are huge wins. Mm-hmm. If like there's something going on in your life that's stressful and you look back and you're like, man, you know, three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, like that would have sent me down a fast food bender for like mm-hmm. three months. I would have gained, you know, like 50 pounds in three months. You know, that's, that was my old self. Yeah. And now, even if maybe you have dealt with a little bit of regain around this stressful situation, whatever it is, like mm-hmm. maybe, you know, and like I said, certain goals have had to be let go of, but you're learning how to cope with it differently. You're learning like, and you are making progress and you need to celebrate that. You need to be able to recognize like, holy cow, I, I am handling this so much better than I would have all those Mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. Like I have come so far and don't lose sight of that because the struggle, life stresses, it will envelop you if you let it. It will pull Mm -hmm. you down into the darkness if you let it. Mm -hmm. And it will make it so hard to see how far you've come. And if you give into that, that is when we spiral backwards Mm -hmm. because we give into that hopeless feeling, you know, regain a lot. It's not even just about like a little five or 10 pound fluctuation here and there. It's about letting that turn into this like hopeless feeling and then letting that hopeless feeling take over and downward spiral instead of like, okay, having grace and compassion around that. I'm navigating something really stressful right now. I'm navigating something and I'm trying to learn new coping strategies. I'm trying to be aware of how I'm handling this, of, um, you know, transfer addictions, things Mm -hmm. like that. Um, maybe my weight's going to fluctuate a little bit right now. That's okay. I'm going to have some grace for that. Our weight doesn't have to maintenance doesn't necessarily mean that your weight just stays one number. And if it's not that one number, then you failed. Right. Right. It's a range. It needs to be a range. We're just talking range. (laughs) Yeah. It has to be a range. Give yourself a good buffer range of like, this is my good, healthy maintenance range. Yeah. And if things start getting outside of that, 
especially you will know if it's, you feel it, you know, yep, if you know. it's getting outside of that and it's feeling unhealthy, you're not feeling your best, mm-hmm. then that's something to address. But knowing that it's okay to have weight fluctuations, it's okay mm-hmm. to go up and down a little bit. It doesn't have to send you into a panic. It doesn't have to send you into a spiral again. We're learning how to navigate life's waves up and down Mm -hmm. and your weight might also have some waves up and down and that's okay because stress itself, just stress will affect your weight and how you're carrying weight, how you're holding weight. So you have to have some, um, yeah, some compassion around that, some understanding about that, like that it's okay. So I, Um, I think for me with the whole, uh, regain thing, I didn't, I didn't have plans in place to reel myself back in. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, cause I spiraled, I 100% spiraled. I was not caring. I was drinking. I was eating foods that I knew I knew I shouldn't be eating and I still ate them. I still went and bought them. Mm -hmm. So I had no plan whatsoever to kind of be like, Okay, Kelly, you've you've now gained 15. Like, let's let's recut like reevaluate what we're doing and move on. I just stepped off that scale and never went back on. Yeah. And in my brain, I was like, ah, I haven't gained that much. Ah, I haven't gained that much. And then when you do finally step back on that scale yeah. and you see that 200 number, I was like, I'm so far past now. I have no plan. I have no plan. Did you how feel to like you got in. too far out? I, I think I got. And I think that's where that failure kind of mindset comes in for me, especially because when I look. I'm feeling very emotional. It's OK. It's OK. I hate that. <laughs> it's OK. So when you get so far past, like, how do you come back? And then you're like, I failed everything that I've done. I worked so hard. And just because I fell off for a second it's like and that goes by so fast it does. like 5 10 15 and then when you see like oh i gained back half of the weight i lost literally half how do i move how do you bring that back and get that back because it's not the same like at all it's not when you get into your third year it's like oh i'm legit starting over now and yeah. I'm not, I know I'm not because no. I still have 60, like I'm not where I was, but it's still like, another thing is being in this community as like people know us well, and it's really hard to admit mm-hmm. to yourself that like, and to people that I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I run a podcast about bariatrics and I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing with my own self. It's really like intimidating and very yeah. hard to admit. That you need help. Like you, you can't do this alone Mm -mm. at all. No, you need a team of fucking people to help. It's not, and you have to like, and you need to ask for help because everybody wants to help. Yeah. Because we don't want you to feel like that at all. It literally feels like some days, like I failed myself and I know like I haven't, I haven't completely failed. But when you couple that with my weight is my top, my worth is tied to my weight. Yeah. My weight is shit right now. I'm, I don't like asking for help and I don't trust myself. Like, oh, that's a lot. You got one big bubble of emotions yeah. mm-hmm. where you're like, and some days I'm like, no, I've got this. I'm, I can do this. And then other days it's like, fuck it. I've already gone this far. Mm-hmm. Like, what does it matter? Yeah. If it wasn't for this podcast, I probably would have spiraled even more. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I would be in a good mental space. No. At no. all. Mm-mm. So firstly, this podcast is all about you guys showing real life. Yes. You guys showing people the real ups and downs Mm -hmm. of this process. You are not alone in this struggle, Kelly. What I want to kind of bring you back to. So I'm not going to mention my client's name, but I have a client that she had surgery I think two years ago, maybe okay. three years ago, but she lost a good amount of weight. Mm-hmm. She kind of hit a stall. She wasn't exactly super happy with where she got, which I know that's not exactly your story, but yeah. um, she lost a significant amount of weight. Then 
life hit her really hard. She got to that, like, she was a little over a year post-op. Life hit her really hard, really big life stresses. She had a job change. She had all these things. And she gained 60 pounds back. She gained 60 pounds back in a matter of a year. Mm -hmm. And that's when she found me because she was about to go on OptiFast. She was debating Mm -hmm. between OptiFast and you know, she's just trying to grasp for anything. Anything. She's just like you. She feels like a complete failure. Mm -hmm. She feels like she's worthless now that she has gained weight back. Mm -hmm. Um, because so much of our worth is tied to our weight. Mm -hmm. Something I have tried to get her to realize, and I would like you to realize as well, because me and you have talked about this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to talk a little open and honest here. We talked about this in the last podcast. Mm -hmm. You even admitted that in your first couple of years post-op, you were very strict. Mm -hmm. You were very, you didn't really practice a lot of food freedom. Mm -hmm. You were kind of more diet culture mindset. Mm -hmm. You were much more, you know, very low carb, very carbs are so bad. Yeah. I was, I was like, Nope, no carbs here. They Mm -hmm. don't enter my body. Yep. Yep. So basically you restricted for like a year, Mm -hmm. heavily restricted. Mm -hmm. And then you enter. So you enter maintenance, but just that itself, just navigating that now, how do I go into maintenance and practice, start incorporating other foods, start incorporating more balance. Like you have that going on, Mm -hmm. but then you also had this big life event that hit at the same time. And you've never also really learned how to cope in a healthier way, Mm -hmm. how to, you know, uh, what other things to reach for instead of food. And you've been, again, restricting so heavily for so long, Mm -hmm. which leads to binging just on its own when you restrict that. So what I want you to recognize Kelly is, and a lot of this, it's because we didn't know better at the time. Mm -hmm. We thought, we think we're doing everything the right way because that's the other thing about this bariatric journey is a lot of times it is set up in the beginning so strict, so structured, restricted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is very diet culture like in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And if you are not working with like a coach like me or um, a good dietitian or something like that, that works on more balance, that is mm-hmm. focused on helping you learn how to incorporate these things over time, then you again, get into maintenance and you don't really know what to do. You don't know how to handle that. And you don't know how to handle these life situations. So Mm -hmm. I want you to give yourself some grace and compassion right now, because you're learning. That's what this journey is. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's no failing. There's no failing because you're still here. You're still in it. You're still trying. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you are not a failure. You went through something horrible in the last year, two years, and you are learning for the first time and you're making huge steps in this learning just with you going to therapy now. Like that's huge trying to work on feeling those feelings and learning new coping mechanisms. Like this is big work that you're putting in. And maybe right now, while you're working on that right now, you're kind of working on more of like mindset and Mm -hmm breaking down old patterns, recognizing old patterns, bringing awareness in Mm -hmm. while you're working on that heavy work. You know, again, we're talking about being at capacity, what Mm -hmm. you can handle right now. You might have to be okay with, you know, really baby stepping right now your way back. Mm -hmm. Okay. And maybe it even means I think some healing around your relationship with food needs to happen too Mm -hmm. for you to not only lose the weight again, but maintain it Mm long-term. Yeah. And that might mean while you're working on these things, you might maintain right here for a little bit Mm -hmm. and that's okay. That doesn't have to mean, you know, again, that doesn't mean failure. That doesn't mean that you're not worthy. Mm -hmm. We're just, we're taking a whole new approach to things. You are you're learning a whole new skill set, basically. Mm-hmm. And you need to give yourself some grace with that. And building that trust back is just those little baby steps, focusing on one thing at a time okay. to show yourself, I'm a priority. I keep the promises that I make to myself. Mm-hmm. I can do this. And yeah. then once you've kept that one promise, then you can build on, then you can add in another routine, another habit, whatever that is. Um, you know, 
I would say too, like, it's kind of like, and you guys are going to laugh a little bit. It's kind of like you're taking a class on yourself. Mm-hmm. You it's, are. it's like yourself 101, right? Yeah. And no one really knows like the ending of this, no. this class, right? But all you can do is just do a chapter at a time. And if you mm-hmm. can just do the baby steps of a chapter or a page, whatever it is for you, just do that. So mm-hmm. that way you can learn one, learn about yourself. Yeah. Because a lot of us don't know. I I would say it doesn't hit you till your 30s um, yeah. of who you are, what you like, what you don't like, what you're going to mm-hmm. put up with um, with yourself and others. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a huge thing. And then know that you're not failing just because it's not the scale isn't moving right now. Like your life is a long time thing and you'll you can lose later. Mm-hmm. Right now, you yeah. right now we have to figure out how do we learn the skills so I can be successful later? Yeah. Like that's yeah. the deal. Yeah. And we have to be willing to do the work and being OK. It's a slow process yeah. because yeah. we don't know ourselves, really. The surgery really helps with that. Mm-hmm. It brings it to a forefront because you have the mental problems that are there. Everybody has mental problems. It's whether you want to yeah. work on them or not. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's like, hey, just do the baby steps and be OK with the baby steps. And once mm-hmm. you do one or two baby steps and you confirm that you can do it, then you'll start mm-hmm. trusting yourself. Yeah. Yes. So it's just you got to You got to just take that little leap, just that little baby leap, yeah. because yeah. it's worth you're worth it. Like yeah. you're yeah. fucking worth it. So like though that's why the all or nothing mentality doesn't work for situations like these because we have to have fucking baby steps. Yeah. Or I would I would probably vomit in anxiety every day if I didn't just do the little baby steps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I can feel yeah. it right now. Like I'm like, oh, I could totally puke because it's just a lot. It's it, a lot. It is a lot. You know? It's a lot. And it's it's hard not to reach for those quick fixes. Yeah. You know? Yes. Because, yes, yes. and I, I, I've i said it before, like with my journey of regain, my first instinct is cut out all carbs. It worked last time. Mm-hmm. That's what I need to do. But I'm not, I think by cutting out all carbs, I'm not trusting myself to eat them in the manner that they should be eaten. Correct. Carbs are not evil. No. There are many ways you can eat carbs that work for your body. My and it's really hard not to get trapped in that diet culture mentality. Yeah. yeah. Because that's what worked for me. I mean, I reached I was telling this on off air. I reached for fucking diet pills year mm-hmm. two and three. Yep. Like I and Kelly was the one that told me, no, what are you doing? And I was like, because my yeah. brain was like quick fix, um, quick fix. Like my mom mm-hmm. and I have always been able to like, oh, we just go use the pills, use the pills. And like those don't I knew in my head like that's not going to work. Mm-hmm. I got your advice. Don't fucking do that. Mm-hmm. And then in my head, I was like, oh, my God, Dr. Patterson's going to find I out. Like, she'll I know said <laughs> was bring the pills to your surgeon uh-huh. and ask your uh-huh. surgeon if it's OK to she take did. them. And I was like, oh, I'm not even going to do that. I already yeah. know she's going to say no. And she's like, yeah, she would say no. And I'm like, so then why are you even reaching for them? Yep. Like, this isn't. Yep. And that's the thing is, like, I can give you that advice. Yeah. But it's really hard to take that advice for myself. Those that can't do teach. It, yep. Those 100%. Yeah. Because I'm like, yeah, eat this, eat this. And then I get home and I'm like, give me all the sugar. Yeah. Like, and that's that's what happens mm. when you eliminate all the carbs like that. That's a lot mm. of times why people nighttime eat, graze in the evenings, can't control their cravings, mm. binge. It's because you have you've been restricting Mm -hmm. a certain food group or item, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then and tip it, if it's carbs, that's because your body actually needs that. Mm -hmm. And so then it's going to get it one way or the other. Like we either intentionally incorporate Mm -hmm. those or at some point your body's going to get those and it's not going to be in the way that we would like it to be. And Mm -hmm. what I would say, Kelly, is you keep saying like that worked for me in the past. Mm -hmm. I would really challenge that mindset. If, you struggled with gaining weight back. That means it didn't work. work. Whatever that was, mm-hmm. it didn't work. It wasn't maintainable. If it yeah. is not maintainable, then it it's not work. working. Yeah. Cutting all carbs out is not maintainable mm-hmm. long term. Yeah. So I totally relate to what you're saying with even me. I I coach on this all the time. Mm-hmm. I preach anti-diet culture. Mm-hmm. Like I, you know, and I've said it multiple times. I truly feel like one of the reasons I've been so successful on my journey long-term is because I've rejected anything that sounds like a diet, feels yep. like a diet. If it's asking me to restrict my meals, restrict uh, a food group, 
something like that is a no from me because that doesn't work for me. That didn't work for me in the past. It's not going to work for me now. Yep. Um, and I, I truly feel like that's one of the reasons I've been, I've maintained so successfully yeah. is because I, it's not always easy though, because like you said, even mm-hmm. myself right now, I'm going through a hard year mm-hmm. and I can feel it with my own body. I don't weigh a lot, but I, I can feel it with my own body that my composition has changed mm-hmm. a little bit. And even I, those gimmicks are, they're shiny. They're, you know, yeah. Oh, if I could just lose, mm-hmm. yeah, 10 pounds, then I probably would feel so much better. But that's mm-hmm. actually not true because typically, whatever is losing that 10 pounds, isn't going to solve whatever it is that's actually causing that 10 pound weight or 20 pound, whatever it is, you know, whatever it is that's causing you to gain weight right now, just losing that weight, isn't going to fix it. It's not going to make you happier. It's not going to fix anything. We look at that though, as because we're grasping for control. Mm -hmm. That is why we look for those, quick fixes, those diets, Mm. those promises, um, because we're grasping for control. So that's when we need to recenter ourselves, think of one or two habits or routines that's going to make us feel like we're back in control, Mm -hmm. calm ourselves back down, recenter ourselves back in our wellness journey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, But sticking to what you know is actually going to work and is actually going to be maintainable, not like trying to fight that urge to reach for the diets, the pills, um, the cleanses, whatever that is, um, because it doesn't actually work long term. And you just have to keep reminding yourself of that. You know, cool. all, all you really need to do to get yourself moving in that direction that you want to move again is, you know, tracking or logging of some sort. I honestly feel like with what you're going through right now and what you're navigating, I think food journaling for you would be really, really helpful right now. Not even full on tracking, which again, that might mean that right now we're not even truly focusing on weight loss yet. Mm -hmm. You're more focusing on what is going on mentally and emotionally around food. Well, and yeah. building and then, that habit yeah, yes. of writing it yeah. down without having yeah. numbers attached or, yeah. and I would say too, what would help is like if, diet culture doesn't teach you anything, right? Like when mm-hmm. you, when you go through it and if you use the pills or if you use that cleanse or whatever, what did it teach you to take a pill? If it, didn't teach you anything, then it's not worth your fucking time Mm -hmm. because this whole journey is a learning process. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you're not learning about a yourself or b the food or whatever the case is, then don't do it because Mm -hmm. you should be learning. Like that's the deal. And cause like with me being seven years out, it's because I'm open to learn. Like Mm -hmm. I would say that's been the biggest key. And when I said this on the last episode with just me and you, um, where it's like, you just have to have enough good days than bad days. Mm-hmm. That's all yeah. you have to do. The whole half, half, half ass thing. It works because you have to have just a little bit more. And then yes. you taught yourself some stuff and you'll mm-hmm. learn yourself some stuff and you just have to be open that, Hey, what you were doing wasn't working and being yeah. okay with saying it didn't work. I like, and then you're not a fuck up because it didn't work. It just doesn't work because mm-hmm. diet culture doesn't fucking work. It like yeah. we know this, we've lived it for fucking decades. Like it doesn't work. It's just a fucking companies that are just wanting to get money from you. Mm-hmm. And that's all it is. And we can do this, but we just need a team of help and be willing to t- learn, learn every day. Yeah. And don't yeah. feel bad that you didn't know something. Cause it's like, we can't know everything. You don't know <laughs> we until can't. you don't know. Yeah, you just yeah. don't know. And that's yeah. okay to not know. I think some people are scared to just not know, like, or have an answer for something. Yeah. And you taught me that of like, it's okay to not know. Yeah. It's okay to I sit think, in the not know too. Yeah. yeah. And I think also a lot of us on this journey, and again, I, I also hear this from my clients a lot. Like they just, they want to hit like that end goal. Like yeah. they just, and we really have to get away from this idea that there's just like this one end goal. There isn't there. We have to adopt the idea and the mindset that we're in this for life. This is a wellness journey. It is not just a weight loss journey. It is a wellness journey, getting to a place where we are 
healthier, happier, can function better in the life that we want to live. Yeah. And that is a lifelong process of getting to know yourself. Mm -hmm. Like that heal, true healing doesn't have an end goal. It is a Mm -hmm. lifelong journey, Mm -hmm. true, you know? And so being okay with that and open, just like you said, to learning over and over. You're going to try things. It's not going to work out Mm -hmm. and that's okay. Adjust, tweak, find. And I think you said this earlier on, too about like being honest about like what you want Mm -hmm. and like the life that you want and I think that's something else I think I thought that was like something really important that you kind of keyed in on is so many times we think that we want a certain lifestyle we Mm -hmm. think we want a certain body type we think we want a certain whatever it is but are you actually willing to put in whatever work Mm -hmm. or whatever it would take to get get there? there If not, then you don't. Then actually, that isn't something that you want. Nope. So you need to be honest with yourself Mm -hmm. about what it is that you actually, and is it something that you actually want, or is it something that you think you should want? Yeah. Because Mm -hmm. I think we live our lives in a lot of shoulds. I should do this. I Mm -hmm. should do that. I should want this. Yeah. The should I could have would have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I should be working towards that. Um, I heard this one quote, and it was. Oh my God. I forgot. It was something like check your should or something. Oh my God. What was it? But whenever you find yourself saying like, Oh, I should do this or should have done that. Why? Like whenever you say the word should check in, Mm -hmm. why do I feel that way? Is it because it's actually something that I want or is it something where that person Mm -hmm. You're, you're just looking at how someone else is living their life. And you think that that's how you should be living yours. And maybe that's actually not realistic for you. Yeah. So checking in with what you're actually working towards. And is it something that you're willing to achieve and maintain long-term? Because again, that's also where that feeling of constant failure sets in. If you're Mm -hmm. continuously chasing something that you actually don't really want, but you just think that you should want it. like. Yeah. And you're constantly going to be failing. Because if you think about it, like we're all, and I'm going to just go like a tiny squirrel moment, but it does relate. Um, like the, all of us has been breaded into like, we need to live the American dream, right? The fucking white picket fence, the house, the mm-hmm. family, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And so like a lot of us get in the job market and we just take jobs, not because we want to, mm-hmm. because we have to, we have to do it to survive. And I realized this this morning that I have literally every job I've ever had. It's not because I wanted it. It's because I needed it to fucking live. And I've always just found a company that's just a little bit better every time, a little bit better. And I realized what I really want to do is what I'm doing right now with you guys. Mm -hmm. Like this is, you can tell because I'll do whatever it fucking takes to make sure this happens. Like to make sure this fucking stigma is gone. Mm -hmm. And if we can alleviate even like a percentages, that's fine. At least we're Mm -hmm. working towards it. And I have all the will and want and passion in the world to get that fucking done. Yeah. But I, but it took me a while to figure out that that's actually what I want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, like I have a degree in accounting. I minor in communication. Thank God I have a minor in communication because this makes sense. Like, <laughs> but the accounting, like I was, I'm not meant to be a CPA. I just love numbers, yeah. but like I still had to go through that process. And then this process to really find what I actually want to do. Mm-hmm. And even like, cause you're talking about journaling too. Like you could just have a list in your journal of like, what are your priorities for the day? kind of hit that a little bit. And then what are things that you actually interest you that you want to do? Mm -hmm. You can even incorporate exercise. What are the things that you like to do that are physical that maybe aren't even the gym? Just start making some lists because I know Kel loves lists. I like lists. I love lists. They feel good, you know? So it's like, if you can just start listing some random stuff, well, you it feels go, good to check, check, off. Some, check them uh-huh. off. It gives but you the little dopamine hit. Yeah, yeah. And it's a different way, especially when you're in maintenance mode, you get these dopamine yeah. hits, a different sector. And then you actually learn about yourself again, learning, like you start yeah. making these lists and you're like, what kind of correlates, what mm-hmm. makes sense together? And then you're like, oh, that's what I really want to do. And I think it helps you learn of what your capacity is too, because that's yeah. another thing. Like, especially I know for me and being on Instagram and stuff and trying to run my own business, mm-hmm. being new at this, I got on Instagram and I see all these people that are doing all these amazing things. And it makes me feel like, again, 
I should be doing all of that too. Right. I, why right. am I not doing that? That's what I should be doing. And it makes mm-hmm. me feel like a failure instead of checking in with myself. Why do I feel that way? Mm-hmm. That's not true. I'm doing the best that I can. I'm navigating my life the best way that I can. Yep. And I think like with listing something to be aware, again, kind of like, cause a theme in this also is like navigating times of struggle. Right. Yeah. yeah. So keeping your to-do list realistic though, as well, like when you are, sometimes I like what I like to do with making my to-do list also because I'm very ADHD and when you're ADHD, it's really easy to have a list that is like one mile long. Yeah. All the things, all the things that not only to do today, but for like the next year, like this is everything that I need to get. You and Kelly sound a lot alike. (laughs) And then... (laughs) And then it gets very overwhelming. Then you Mm -hmm. freeze because Mm -hmm. you don't know what to tackle first. You don't know what to prioritize. You don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So what I would say is sometimes you're in a mode where you literally need to brain dump all of that. And that's okay. Brain dump it, get everything out, get the whole list out. If you need to do it every day, that's fine. Get the whole list out, but then make another list, a list on top of the list of your actual, like, keep it to like three main priorities for that mm-hmm. day. Like these are the three things that are the most important to me today. Mm-hmm. Maybe one of them is work oriented. Maybe one of them is personal oriented. And then maybe one of them is like wellness oriented or Ooh. something. But these are the three things that are the most important. And as long as I get these three things done, then I have accomplished what I needed to accomplish today. Anything else you get done outside of that. So typically what I have I have my running list a mile long of like years worth of to do's to do, Mm -hmm. but then I have like my daily three. And then outside of that, I'll have like some other little tasks. Like maybe I need to make a phone call for this. Maybe I need to schedule this appointment. Maybe I need to follow up on something. So then I'll have like my other little things under that. And again, if I get those little things done, those other bonus things, that's great. Mm -hmm. But if I don't, then at least I tackled my three main Mm -hmm. things that I needed to get done that day. And that really helps me again, especially when I'm struggling, especially when life feels like a lot that helps Mm -hmm. me focus Mm -hmm. and it helps me feel accomplished and in control. Like I, I did something. I do think a lot of times in those moments, we do need kind of that, like that yep. check off mm-hmm. that we have, we've done something. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I also wanted, one of the things you mentioned earlier was about, you know, the, not the half assing instead of no assing. Mm-hmm. I think I've mentioned this before, but I think this is another thing that kind of helps, uh, calm me down a little bit okay. when I'm having hard days mm-hmm. is knowing So I'm also really big on like 80, 20 lifestyle, right? Like the whole 80, 20, like try at least 80, the 80% are the days where you're trying to make some sort of progress. Those aren't perfect days, but you're making your, maybe some days are perfect, but Mm. days you're just trying to make some sort of progress on those days. So Mm. that's the 80%, 20% are those days where nothing. You don't have the energy. You don't have the capacity. You're on the couch all day. You're in bed all day. You're sick. You're on vacation. It's holiday, whatever it is. If you take that in a yearly span, that's 75 days out of the year. That's two and a half months that you're giving yourself grace for that you're giving yourself. Yeah. Yep. Like the, if you don't accomplish anything that day, like, so what? Yeah. So what? Give your, give yourself grace. Try the next day. You have space. You have flexibility. Mm-hmm. You have wiggle room. It doesn't have to be this all or nothing, um, you know, and we need that for life. Cause again, life is just going to keep hitting us. Mm-hmm. And these last few years have been fucking hard mm-hmm. and heavy. And we feel that even on top of everything else we have going on in our lives, Mm -hmm. like, and we need more than ever right now to practice compassion, grace, gentle self-care. Like you said, Mel, like doing something, Mm -hmm. trying to do something every day that 
not just makes you feel good, but that like fills your cup that yeah. brings you joy. Mm-hmm. Scheduling, that is part of that getting back to 10, right? So you're at a five. What can we do to get you back to a 10 or close to, um, you know, incorporating joy. And that's also coping strategies. Like what are healthier coping strategies? Well, typically when we're reaching for food, when we're reaching for alcohol, when we're reaching for things like that, it's because something in life has, something has taken from us. We've been triggered by something. Mm -hmm. We've been stressed. We're depleted. Something that day, that week, that month, whatever it is, is taking from us, taking our energy. A healthy coping strategy, a healthy coping mechanism can be anything, anything that you feel like is giving back to yourself. Maybe, maybe it is a simple walk. Maybe it's a simple walk and not like a walk with purpose. Maybe it's just a walk to go out and watch the birds, Mm -hmm. or maybe it's a walk to just go out and pet as many dogs as you can pet along the way. Like, um, you know, maybe it's a bubble bath. Maybe it's doing your nails. Maybe it's, coloring in a coloring book or painting or something like that. Um, you know, doing something where at the end of it, you actually feel better Yeah. instead of feel worse. Because when we go to something like food or alcohol or something like that, in those moments, mm-hmm. we actually, we aren't helping ourselves. We don't think about that in the moment. We, all we're focused on is that instant gratification mm-hmm. piece. Which that's the other thing you have to realize is working on new coping strategies. It's not going to be as instantly gratifying. You have to give that time. You have to give it time to kind of build that up, to start recognizing how good it's actually making you feel in comparison to the old coping mechanisms. So yeah, (laughs) (laughs) I feel like we just had one long therapy session. I feel like it too. It feels like, good, if, though. If I was going to cry in any episode, it would be Michaela's. I know. I know. I'm very <laughs> proud of you, though, for showing your emotion Thank and letting you. it out. Because, Thank like, we, I mean, people need to we see, see it. Yeah. 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 I, it's I feel like I'm I'm getting there. I'm I'm getting it's making it easier with addressing all of these like thoughts and stuff that's going on. It's making it easier to be more open to showing emotion because I know that like showing emotion is not a failure. No. And in my brain before it would be like, you don't show emotion. Yeah. Like you just it's a sign you of don't weakness. Do it. It's a sign of weakness. Yeah. Exactly. And that's not a sign of weakness. Showing emotion is showing that you have emotions and you're, mm-hmm. you're going through something and it kind of, you know, the story about your client, like our stories are very similar. Yep. Our paths are, are very similar. So by being open and sharing your story, like I would have never known that you had somebody that was kind of identical to my story if I had not shown emotion. Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. It's that learning process. Something else to also know. I'm also working on getting a certification in embodiment. I don't know if you guys know what the practice of embodiment is, but it is the basically tapping into your body, learning to listen to your body, honoring what it needs, honoring your emotions, honoring those sensations that come up, whether it is good Mm -hmm. or bad. And what happens over time is because we are trained, we are literally conditioned to not honor the negative feelings that arise. Mm -hmm. We are conditioned to push those down at all costs. We don't have time. We don't have time in this busy world to to cry, to get angry, to throw a fit. We don't have time to deal with that. We push it down. We numb it. That is why for years we have used food. We have used alcohol, whatever it is to numb, to not feel. What that has done though, is by not allowing ourselves to feel the negative emotions that come up. There's a lot that goes into it, but, um, basically we're numbing ourselves to all sensations. So even the good moments, even the happy moments, we're not able to enjoy those as fully because 
we are numbing ourselves to the point where, you know, you can't numb half of the sensation in your body and then think that you're going to be able to fully feel other things. Everything, like, yeah. yeah. And it also makes a lot of sense as to why we have no connection to our hunger or fullness cues. Yeah. We don't know how to tap into awareness when we are in those emotional states and what we are using to cope with those. It also cycles into when we are having these emotional moments, mm -hmm. there is, so when you're having a pleasurable moment and you allow yourself to fully feel that and fully be in that moment and like express it, you get it out, you dance, you laugh, mm -hmm. you're, you're in it. Mm -hmm. You're allowing your body to go through the full range and get it out and express it and be there on the other end of the spectrum with pain or sadness or whatever that is. If we don't allow ourselves to fully feel that and express it, then that ends up being trapped in our body. And it stays trapped as frozen tension over time, which leads to more frozen states where we get stuck. We don't know shame, guilt. We can't get ourselves moving. We can't get ourselves functioning. We're burned out. We, we can't cope. And it's because we have so much frozen tension inside. And so learning to when you are feeling the sadness, when you're feeling the anger, whatever it is, like if you have the time or capacity in that moment, and sometimes it's a practice, like for me, because I'm also learning how to express things more in the moment instead of bottling it. Yeah. And sometimes I don't even know exactly what I'm feeling. I'm just like super irritated and frustrated and mm -hmm. I know I need to get out. So I will go turn on screamy, screamy, angry music, or I will go turn on like a Pixar movie, something to like make me cry, something to make me scream, something to help me figure out whatever it is that I'm trying to release mm -hmm. and get it out of the system. And I feel so much better after I do that. So realizing that truly like bottling those emotions like that, it leads to more of that, like shame and guilt that we feel more of the, that stuck frozen feeling that we get in yeah. and struggle to get out of. Like a lot of that is because, and then we go to numbing. We keep mm -hmm. reaching for numbing because we don't know how to express. We don't know how to get this out. And instead of trying to figure that out, we just want it to go away. So we numb ourselves. Um, so working on, you know, like a daily embodiment practice could be mm -hmm. something like uh, breath work. So mm -hmm. tapping in, just focusing on your breathing, what you're feeling, what you're noticing, what's coming up. Um, it can be like a meditation. Mm -hmm. It could be... Um, dancing mm -hmm. um so you know there's um we call oh those my God. we call those dance parties at my house yes, yes. dance yeah. parties like, dance, dance party, party time yep there's ah uh, i'm losing the word for it it's a specific word with dance um but it's like an embodiment style of dance so you're like focusing on what emotion you're feeling as mm -hmm. you're moving though and trying to like release that emotion as you're dancing yeah um or like shaking is another good, but I don't know if you've tried shaking, um, but that can be another really great release, especially if you're feeling this anxiety, you're feeling this like tension, you don't know what it is. Maybe what you need in that moment is just to like <laughs> shake, shake it, it out. out. Yeah. Literally. Like literally. Shake it out. It out. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, I feel like that when I, when I did yoga, mm -hmm. because yes, yoga is another great one. Yeah. Cause yeah. you're moving and you're breathing and you're like, all you can do is like focus on the pose that you're doing. And then what are you thinking? Mm -hmm. And I feel mm -hmm. like I had a better handle on what emotions I was feeling when I was doing yoga, because yeah. I did have that, you know, I went from 15 minutes to like an hour, mm -hmm. but yep. yeah. over time I gradually went up, but it was like, Every day I had an intention. Every day I set that with myself and I feel like I was better at feeling what I was feeling even then. Yeah. More than I do right now, which I just, yeah. just start fucking doing yoga again. Yeah. No, <laughs> yoga 
yoga is honestly one of the best for like mind body Mm -hmm. connection and it can be great for releasing trauma Mm -hmm. moving trauma through the body Mm -hmm. and releasing it um oh ecstatic dance that's the static ecstatic dancing can be great and there are places you can look it up there are places that do like ecstatic dance oh like gatherings i know here in denver there's a couple places where i think it's like every thursday night there's like an ecstatic dance um that you can go interesting i have to look that up see if there's anything in salem so we heard from you earlier that you're doing a a thing you've got it in the works so tell us about it kind of ties into what we've been talking about so my next workshop that i'm going to be doing because I do one-on-one coaching. Mm -hmm. Um, At the moment, my one-on-one coaching is full. Mm -hmm. I will be opening slots again in uh, November, December for the next round. Um, You know, with the one-on-one coaching that is very personalized, that's very in-depth. I only work with 10 to 12 women at a time because Mm -hmm. it's so, you know, there's a lot with it. Mm -hmm. Um, So since my one-on-one is full, I still want to like offer other things. So my next thing that I'm working on, um, is my not another diet workshop. Yeah. It's my next offering. And it really ties into a lot of what we've been talking about. You know, it's really going to be focused on how to use this tool, um, to navigate, not just weight loss, but then also moving into like food freedom. How do we, because again, there's not a lot of us here in this bariatric journey and world. A lot of us aren't given a lot of guidance going forward. It's there's this like pamphlet or book or whatever that we're given up front. Mm -hmm. And that's how to, you know, the diet you're supposed to stick to for the first few months. Mm -hmm. And then that's kind of it. There's really not a lot of information on how to increase carbs Mm -hmm. into your diet, how to work on more balance, how to unlearn the diet mindset that's been so ingrained for so long. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, there's also a lot of myths and stuff around like sleeve stretching and things Mm -hmm. like that, that we have to navigate. And so that is what this workshop is all going to be focused on. And there's going to be a challenge component as well. I talked about food journaling. Mm -hmm. So to me, food journaling, tracking is amazing. Tracking is awesome. You know, I think you learn a lot about nutrition with tracking, but if you're someone who's really trying to work on your relationship with food, Mm -hmm. you're trying to work on your mindset around food, your emotions around food, things like that. I think food journaling is truly one of the best things that you could work on. Mm -hmm. And I've had major success with that with my clients. And so part of this workshop is going to be like a 21 day challenge of food journaling. So getting people to practice that on a daily basis and really see what comes up and how their relationship with food maybe evolves even within, you would be so shocked, even just like one or two weeks of true food journaling, Mm -hmm. honest food journaling what that kind of exposes for you and what that brings up. Like it is amazing. So that is, that's what the workshop and challenge will be focused on. And yeah, that should be launching sometime like mid September. We'll be starting sometime around early October is my hope. Awesome. Oh, that's so exciting. So if you guys, I mean, I like the sound of it already. Yeah, me too. Um, (laughs) But if you guys want to, we will have all of Michaela's information linked below. That's right. So go and click on that. Check her out. Join the challenge Mm -hmm. or the the challenge and the workshop. 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 Workshop first, then it'll go into a challenge. Perfect. So you learn a lot. You're going to learn a lot about yourself. I know I am already... I've, I've learned so much from this. I know every episode. time, man, every, every time. time with her. It's great. I swear your, your calling is to like be in therapy. Yeah. Like to help you bring it out. And I, 
Like I said, if there was an episode that I was going to cry in, it would be yours because <laughs> it's just the emotions. They come out. Right. And yeah. if you guys want to meet Michaela, she's going to be at the award show. Yes, guys. She is. She's going to be there. She's nominated in a few categories yep. because she's fucking awesome. Yeah, exactly. So come on and hang out with her. Us. Mm. It's going to be a lovely night. And yep. I just can't wait to see you again in person. Yeah. So thank you so much for coming on again. Thank you. Yes. Thank you guys. This was I know we went a little long, but you guys know me. I can talk and talk and talk. So. No. Oh, yeah, this is awesome. This is great. The three of us can talk and talk and talk. Yes. And talk. Oh my God. <laughs> I love right. it. Well, we love you guys and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.